Okay guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at how do you ask questions on the internet. Now in an earlier video in this episode, which I will link down below, we talked about how do you actually find the error message. So now we have gotten our error message, we have also been googling it and it turned out that we couldn't find an answer. Then we want to go ahead and ask a friend or ask in the comment sections under a video or ask on Stack Overflow. It doesn't matter. You are asking somebody instead of just Googling. So you want to make sure to Google first and then ask the question. But once you've been Googling for half an hour, an hour, then it's fine to go ahead and ask the question. Now, I have a question right here, which I asked one year and three months ago. And I don't think it's like really, really good, but it's also not really, really bad. So it's a pretty good question to take a look at and we can sort of dive into it in terms of what's good and bad. So the title is relatively good, if I should say so myself. I'm not claiming to be a genius at asking questions, but you know, a pretty good title. It says what the problem is about. Then we have a little introduction to the problem. And then we have that I have been doing some tests. Now, this doesn't really matter what the question is. You know, you, you want to, of course, take the components of this and put it in your own question. But then this was some Docker stuff. So I've been running some commands. So I've put all the commands that I've ran and the output as well. So people can either just from reading these error messages, determine what the problem is, or they can go ahead and do the test themselves, but they don't have to run these commands because they know that they don't work and they know what the output is. So it's going to be easier for them and faster for them. And people are also going to see, okay, this guy is really seriously wanting this question to be answered. So people are going to be way more nice. There's way more people that's going to be actually answering your question. And this of course depends on how popular the topic is, but people are going to be looking at the message. Okay, this is well written. I actually want to take my time to answer the question. So, you can, know, you can see here, it just continues. And then we have some more information. You know, you want to give as much information as possible. Now, what do you do if you're not that good at English and you don't want to sit here and write a lot of text? Well, first of all, I wouldn't say that there's a lot of text in this. Now, there's, of course, a lot of the commands here, but a lot of this is commands and you would have to type those anyways. So, you can see text-wise, it's actually not that much text. It's pretty short. Now, if you don't want to write a whole lot, then you can go ahead and take pictures. Now I have some code right here and the code is not working. And you know, it's because I haven't installed the node modules folder. But uh, let's say that we just ran this here and we got an error message. And you can see that this code is not running. And it is because I can't find the node modules folder. But let's say that we will like I can't find any answers on the internet for solving this problem here. Now I do guarantee that if you copy this error and paste it into Google that you will get the right answer. But let's say that that wasn't the case, then you want to take a picture. So go ahead and open your screenshot tool, clipping tool, whatever is named. All operating systems have some kind of way of taking pictures, even phones. So go ahead and run that. And you want to make sure to grab as much as you can. Of course, if you are developing code for somebody else, you might not be able to take too much of a screenshot of the code, but you can take a screenshot of a little bit of the code. So you can also most clipping tools have some highlighting tools. Now this is not necessary, but you could just make sure to highlight that this is the error you're getting and you don't know what it is. Now this image tells a lot. You know, this tells that you're on Windows. It tells how good at you are at coding. Now, this can be misleading if there was something you just downloaded off, let's say, one of my tutorials. So it's important to always, even though there's an image, make sure to tell how much, you know, are you a beginner, are you not? Because that means how much the person answering your question has to go in details. Because, you know, sometimes if you're an advanced user, you can jump over a lot of the details. But if you're a new user, you know, when answering the question, you do have to be more specific. So it's important to just tell your skill level to say, hey, I'm new to Node. What do I do? And then, you know, this tells a lot, you know, it tells the error message. And, you know, I can see the code here. So I can generally see what you're doing. And this here would help a lot. And then let's talk about we could probably say like 10 words or 15 words. So not a lot of words. Uh, this would still be a pretty good question, even though you haven't included a lot of uh, 
text. Now, once you've gone ahead and actually taken the picture, you of course have to be able to share this with someone. And the way I would recommend doing that is just go ahead on this website. You want to make sure to take a popular website, not some kind of scammy, uh, questionable website and upload your images on. People are just not going to click the link. So make sure it's a popular site like this one here. And I will leave the link down below to a bunch of the things. And then you can go ahead and put the image on here. If you for some reason can't find the screenshot tool you can also go ahead and share the code on something like pastebin and go ahead and write maybe a line number or highlight say when i have this line the arrow comes or something like that you want to make sure to be as specific as you can sometimes you know you can't be too specific but i feel like in most instances you can be pretty specific you can share images you can go ahead and write comments you can share some of the code or maybe it's just a function that is erroring out then you just share that function yes then you technically leak some code but who cares i mean you know you can get so much code on the internet today. Nobody's really gonna think too much of it, even though you spent five hours on making the function. And it's, you know, the most ingenious function and, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. You can share your code on the internet. Yes, somebody will copy it and use it in their own code. But honestly, you just contribute it to the community. So it doesn't matter. You got something from the community and you gave something back. So, you know, that, that all works out uh, pretty good. So, you know, it is important when you're asking these questions to be specific because when I read some of my comments and sometimes I gotta sit for like 10 minutes and actually try to figure out what is the person asking and for somebody which has a big YouTube channel you know they don't have time to spend 10 minutes they might you know be able to spend 10 minutes on the entire question but they can't spend 10 minutes on just figuring out what it means and then they will just go ahead and jump over that so it's important to go ahead and make sure to ask a specific question make sure to put a lot of documentation if it's a video make sure to include timestamps where you're hitting an error or something like that. Make sure to be very, very specific. Also keep in mind when you're commenting under a video that is old, most likely that YouTuber, now we're talking about YouTubers or video creators, most likely they're not gonna remember what they did a year ago, even a month ago. You know, they are gonna be able to get the code, get it working and spin up the all of the environments, which will take time and then go ahead and figure it out. But just keep in mind that people don't just remember all code that they have written. I at least don't. So when you ask a question, even though it's a month old, I do have to, you know, spin up the code again, get all the things working and then go ahead and actually first figure out how the code works and then go ahead and figure out how to solve your problem. So what I'm trying to say is just make sure when you're asking a question, first of all, that you're done your Googling, make sure to document it well because you are taking other people's time and not to sound mean or anything. And I am more than happy to answer you guys' questions, but just make sure to go ahead ahead and make a good question. It doesn't matter if it's a stupid question or if you can't find an answer, it is totally legit to go ahead and write some text, put some images there or write a lot of text with commands or put some code on pastebin and ask a question. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button. If you want to see more of my videos, I have included two videos right here and hopefully I see you in the next one.